Have you ever canoed down a babbling brook? No, but I have cried at a Taco Bell. Oh, same thing. <laughs> Listen up, campers. It's time to buckle up, pitch a tent, and take a hike. Because Camp Counselors is a variety show. So prepare for a good old-fashioned kumbaya. Weird news. Hot gossip. And scary stories around the campfire. So spooky. <laughs> is this podcast even about camping? No, but it is camp. <laughs> <laughs> this is Camp, camp Counselors. Counselors. Hey, happy campers. campers! Welcome back to Camp Shady Bird. That was really creepy. It, it was... is week <laughs> 66 here at camp. I was trying something new, but the minute I started speaking, I I was like, I was like, abort, abort, abort. You ever do that where you're like, I wonder what would happen if I tried like this with my voice? Like you don't even know what it's gonna sound like, but you just like end up honking like a goose or like just screaming really loud. Well, that's what makes you different. That's what makes you a star because you're not afraid to I have honk the urge the to do it right now. I'm like, Can I hear a little something? No, 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 no. <laughs> Sorry. See? I didn't know I could do that. Actually, that's a lie. I didn't know I could do that, and that's why I chose to do it to impress you, campers. Welcome back to the show, everyone. <laughs> that was very three eleven. Amber is the color of your energy. Okay, let's get on track. We're already right. off track. Guys, what, behave, please. What did we do this week, Jonathan? Uh, we had a very special visitor, and we did some Christmas things. Yes, who was in town, Jonathan? <gasps> My brother Chris, who put the Chris in Christmas. He could quite possibly be called Chris Kringle. If you're naughty, um, no, really happy your brother came to visit. But with visitors here at our apartment comes a sense of anxiety that only I put on myself because I really do enjoy hosting. But it appears that every time someone's coming to stay, our house has never looked dirtier in my mind. Yeah. Like and the lens shifts in my perspective when people are coming. And let's be clear, my brother is like very low maintenance. He doesn't really care. But obviously, anytime we have a visitor, we we just want it, them to be entering into a clean home. But you're so right. I'll be looking around and I'm like, have we have we been living in Phil? Yeah, I'm like looking at a baseboard. I'm like, wait, when was the last time I wiped that fucking baseboard? It's so dusty. I'm disgusting. But it's like, I don't see that normally. But then when someone's coming, I'm suddenly like rearranging the back of cabinets as if people are going through every <laughs> single drawer in the house. They're not. And your brother of all of our visitors on like the list, he's like the least like high maintenance. But still, I'm, I just feel like, why is her house so dusty where is it all coming from and it's not all my skin someone's gonna say that it can't all be coming from who said me. that well dust particles come from your skin and that's why when is that real yes and when you when you have a mattress for like a decade it's significantly heavier than no. when you purchased it because of all the dead skin cells that see i'm not even gonna question myself on that one because i know it's true like you're sh we're constantly shedding think when you itch Give yourself a little itch right now. I'm honestly, I am itching a lot in bed. I'm, a, I'm an itchy girl. Well, it's just a dry, dusty house we live in, and I typically don't mind. But the minute someone's coming to visit, I start to panic. And it doesn't help us that guys were being vulnerable. And this is we've talked about this before, but we're gonna bring it up again. Our toilet downstairs. There's something weird with the pipes. I swear to God, I used the power of pine saw. But like one flush later, and like the water is weird again. Yeah, it's our water system. I swear, it's hard water here at Camp Shady Birch. We can't do anything about it. Make sure you're bringing good conditioner because if you come here for the summer or some of you are just here full time, you guys know that this is not a hair care facility. You have to no. go off site to the local salon and really get your zhuzh there because we cannot provide clean water here at Camp Shady Birch. Sandwich will um, do your hair though if you head on over to the salon cabin. Yeah, he has a certificate in braiding, but he can only do a fishtail. So <laughs> he's working on it. But Chris was here because it was really fun. He was like, I want to see some Christmas stuff in the city. And I feel like we're both, we both like, we're, we're kitschy. We love a holiday. So I'm like, I would also love to see it. So it's like a two for one special. So when he got here, we, we had this idea, right? I think the best thing to do when we have a guest arrive at our apartment is to immediately take them out of the apartment and to like some sort of eatery. You know, somewhere with food and drinks because you can't hit the ground running. You got to like have something to do first. And we're going to steer clear of Mexican food for um, bowel movement issues. 
Yeah, but if you're an IBS survivor like myself, pretty much anything can trigger it. So, True. but I get it for the average for the average person. I do think Mexican can be a little a little harsh on the stomach. So we went for a pizzeria. Mm. So we went to a pizzeria and we had a couple drinks there, and it was a nice way to start because you're catching up, you're eating, you're sipping, you're drinking, you're having some time to really process. Okay, what's the vibe for today? Where are we moving to? Because New York, as a lot of you know, it's a lot of hustle and bustle. Everything is a straight orchestra of decision making, right? It's like, how do we get from here to here? What street are we supposed to be on? What subway are we supposed to be on? It's like, it's fun, but it is a lot of work. It's not like just hopping in the car and parking in a lot. It's like, no, there is a coordination, a choreography of dance, if you will, to get through the city. Right. And we just needed to energize our bodies. And we didn't know then what we know now, but we just, we really needed the power. We needed the the cheesy yeast feast. Yes. Yeah, the cheesy yeast feast. I like that. Thank That's you. exactly what that is. But so you know how like everyone on TikTok right now this year has been been like, oh, this city is so crazy. Like, don't go, don't visit. And recently on our October episodes, I was talking about Salem and I, I hate how people complain about lines because you're like, okay, like, of course, everyone wants to go see seasonal things at the same time. Like, that's the season we're in. But I don't want to say I'm going to put my foot in my mouth, everybody. But <laughs> oh my God, nothing could prepare me for the intensity and the amount of people who were out this weekend to see Christmas decorations in New York. Like it was incredible. And we, we like know, we know it's going to be crowded, obviously. And we did go last year. We saw the Rockettes. However, it was on a Tuesday and it was raining. Yeah. And this weekend that we, we, that Chris came to visit, it was like unseasonably warm. Mm -hmm. So people were out in droves. Where did we go first? Um, where did we go first? Oh, we went to the the little Christmas markets in Bryant Park. Yeah, there apparently it's like one of the top rated Christmas markets in the world. But I'm like, who is doing this survey? I'm sick of these random like accolades. I need to know who's giving this award away. Cite your sources. What do you think about the Bryant Park Christmas Plaza? I, I feel like most cities, like in most towns, have these. Right, 100%. the one in New York City is like it's iconic, it's fun, it's cool, but I do feel like it gives off the energy of like Christmas Winter Lodge supporting small business. And that, though it is true, there are small businesses there. I start seeing a lot of, of big business there. And it's it's big Christmas. That's what it is. Infiltrating. It is. And it's like stuff that you really don't necessarily need. I definitely think it's fun to go to. It was obviously a zoo of people there. So it was really hard to walk, especially in the group of three, to keep everybody together. But I, I'm like, it's, it's a lot of perusing it's like oh look you can get socks with little kitties on it oh my god i found this ornament that's white and it looks like a dove it's like nice but it's i don't know if anything there really like took my breath away i did there was this woman who was selling butterfly displays yeah they were in glass cloches or ornaments and she was like don't worry i don't kill the butterflies i find them dead i don't know how she's doing that though now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, where is she acquiring all these dead butterflies? It could be from like sanctuaries because they'll collect like the dead butterflies. What's the lifespan of a butterfly? Um, you know, one to two. Yeah, it's one to two. We're not maybe, sure. Maybe three. It and, and in really extreme cases, we can get a four. Yeah. But yeah, so we're not sure. So, but she had a lot of cool. Those were cool. That was very like taxidermy, like chic. That was cool. <laughs> Nothing else really like took my breath away. I really wanted to go for the food. Yeah. And both before we get to the food, I had my mind set on something that I was looking for specifically. We looking and we for? passed somebody on the street and I it just clicked in my head. I said, I want to find a scarf. I'm not a scarf wearer. When the fuck am I gonna wear a scarf? You would look great. You should be a scarf wearer. I thank you so much. Um, I, I want to wear a scarf that looks like a candy cane. I want it to be white, mostly white, and I want it have to have some little red stripes that aren't the same size. Like I don't want a traditional like equal red to white ratio no, i want some like tiny lines and some thicker lines like a normal a normal candy cane but that we we did not find well i'm gonna be honest you did go in with a very very specific item in mind which i think wouldn't work in most shopping experiences okay but come holiday season i feel like it's not a crazy ask no it's cold someone selling scarves it's christmas someone selling um candy cane themed things like i feel like you take one and two and you put them together and it should be the what i'm exactly what i'm searching for no i can see well we didn't buy anything long story short here but other people were and they, hey support the businesses i love it i think i'm really big on commercialism i love <laughs> buying things no i really do but um i wanted to buy food 
you know, you guys know me. All I want to do is eat 24 seven. And I saw on TikTok, this woman, she got this like, oh my God, it was amazing. It was like sliced ham. And I'm a big pork lover. You guys know that. And it was on ciabatta and it had, you guys know when there's that cheese on a triangle and they take the knife and they like drag it down the cheese and it just like, it's already like melted somehow. It's and a it just, heated knife, I think. Oh my God, you're so fucking right. It's a heated knife. And they drag it across like the block of cheese and it just like dribbles right off of it onto the ham and cheese. I, I, I'm I still thinking about that, but I couldn't even find it because it was so busy in there. And I wasn't like pissed off about it. Like I, I, I we knew walking into what was happening. We weren't in like a bad attitude. It just like, no, but I couldn't find, I didn't even know where it was. I'm going to be honest. I started to disassociate at one point when I was like, oh, where, like I'm walking, I'm here. Like I wasn't even looking at the stores. I was, I was literally focusing on walking. I Well, you know, what's funny. I did see someone recently, there's a viral rainbow grilled cheese at mm-hmm. this market and someone that I like used to work with at an old Navy, she just went this weekend to get it and it looked perfect. So that's like one of the things It's like not a TikTok trend. It's like, if you go to the Bryant Park market, like Christmas market and want that rainbow grilled cheese, it's really is living up to, I don't know how it tastes, but when you right. pull it apart, it's like a perfect rainbow of cheese. Yeah, it is crazy how it, it keeps its perfect rainbow shape. Yeah. I will say I did see one in the trash. It was the cross. That was the closest I got to it. I saw uh, this man was changing over the trash bags and I, I was like, let me take a peek. I'm shopping around. I might as well see what people are eating and throwing out. And I did see one in there. Not you shopping through the trash because we could While get- disassociating. <laughs> you know what was cool there that they had that I wanted to check out, but it was like one of those things where it's like, if you don't book five weeks in advance, it's not happening. They had a curling themed bar. Oh yeah, that was interesting. I don't quite know what curling is. It just looks like the um, the coffee pots you see at a diner, the bun burners. Yeah, and well, then you just slide that on the ground. Well, during that like Russian Winter Olympics when I was in high school, Sochi. Remember that? No clue. Okay, well, some one of my Olympic Olympic heads out there will remember this. I remember seeing that in that Winter Olympics when I was in high school, and I became like really obsessed with it, like as a joke. But I would actually watch it, and the women's German curling team are so extreme. It's like the trench bowl, like times four on that team. They're very aggressive and loud. So what one person does is they throw, they like glide this um, stone with rock with a handle down a little alleyway. And then one person has an ice scraper in front and the other person has a brush brushing away the scraped ice so that the, that the stone can travel to this almost like uh, um, like a bullseye down the way and whoever gets closest there's a point value there that stone has to feel like royalty it's like pave the way here i come well this is a little controversial did you guys know that most olympians like work day jobs like you think that like if you were like the an olympic curler like that would be enough money i don't know why i thought that would be like your full-time job you're you're at the olympic level of the sport but these people like they don't make a lot of money so they have to like actually like do this on the side yeah unless they're taking like if they're big enough in a big enough sport that they do like commercialized yeah. things like that. But is curling going to get you like a Wheaties box? I'm not sure. I think it should for the record. Okay. But yeah. So I wanted to do that curling bar. We didn't do it. <laughs> and then after that, we're leaving the park and suddenly I get a piss. I have to piss girl like a racehorse. And I wasn't seeing any bathrooms. There, I don't think there was one. That, that, that has to be illegal. I I really don't know because there was a lot of people. Our first trek was to, what was it? It was a coffee shop of some sort. And the line was out the wazoo. Oh, the, oh, the Chipotle. The Chipotle. The Chipotle. Yeah, because yeah. they're famous for their coffee. They and their that. bathrooms, yeah. They're great carne asada brew. <laughs> um, no, so I was like looking for a bathroom. <laughs> And I have a hot tip for our campers out here. If you're ever visiting New York and you have to piss and you can't find a public restroom. If you are at the right time where people are going out to eat, either like the lunch rush or the dinner rush, this is truly your moment to sneak in and use a restaurant bathroom. So we're passing a restaurant directly in front of the park and I see a squall of people at this host stand and everybody looks really overwhelmed. Like everybody's rushing to this place to get a table and I could see her panicking and I was like, this is my perfect opportunity. I'm going to be able to like go right past the host stand and find the bathroom. 
nine out of 10 times, the bathroom is going to be at the back of the restaurant. It mm-hmm. just is, right? So you walk into a busy restaurant, you you go right past the host stand, you run, do not even make eye contact with anybody. And then as you're passing the bar, start kind of scanning, like, I'm looking for my party, I'm looking for my party, because now everybody, you're the heat's off of you, right? You go right to the back, and then you find out, you find a little server walking by, and you say, hey, is the bathroom downstairs? Is the bathroom over here? And they'll tell you exactly where it is. And now you just use a clean restaurant bathroom without having to eat there. Yeah, I think it's all in the confidence. If you mm-hmm. pretend yeah. like you are supposed to be there, that exactly right. You do a little squint of the eyes. You scan the room like you're looking for someone. You're like, oh, where's Christina? She usually sits in the booth over there. But don't do it at the front. You have to get past the host yeah. in before you start squinting because they'll intercept you and then you'll be fooled. Yeah, maybe walk in on your tiptoes a little bit to like look over the crowd. That really sells it. Or if you like really don't want to be confrontational, pretend you're on the phone. As long as your phone screen is locked and be like, Christina, where are you? And then make your way to the back. You really got to... If you put the energy into this, you will have yourself a toilet in in no time. Yeah, it's like a free improv class. Christina, Christina, I don't see you. Are you here yet? Oh, my God. What, what table? And then you're there. Especially because in New York, they're not. They're going to turn you away. They're going to be like, the bathroom's not for the public. Because if we give it to you, then the whole crowd of people are going to be coming in here. So you really just have to act the part. Yeah, and a public restroom in New York can truly be a haunting place a haunting place so a restaurant bathroom you're you're pretty much guaranteeing your a spot of solitude for a minute because it's not gonna happen at the public restroom at central park okay that's gonna be one of the scariest places you've ever seen in your life so you're better off just lying to the restaurant and, and sneaking in there real quick right so then we empty our tanks and we <laughs> head out to the next place right to the famous iconic rockefeller center I wanted to see that silly little tree. Mm -hmm. So we were only like six blocks away. Yeah, pretty close. We make our way, but, you know, the streets are crowded. But it's honestly not all that bad. Like, it's what we were expecting walking to the tree. Yeah, like, there's people kind of walking slow, people on their phones. It's a lot of tourists, but it's like, once again, I'm not anti-tourist for anything. It's like, people are coming to see the same tree that we're going to. Like, who cares? Like, we're all getting there. Until... My brother says he has to pee now. (laughs) And it's like, I need to start saying as adults, we all need to collectively, I'm going to start making people in in the group be like, we'll go try like a mom. Because 15 minutes ago, you didn't have to pee, but now you have to pee. So now next time we're all together with a group of people, whoever has to go to the bathroom, we're all going in and everybody's going to sit there and try for a second because I can't do this. So we get to the tree. We get, no, we go to Saks. Well, yeah. Well, Saks is directly across from the tree. So, yeah. Right. So, we go to Saks first because we heard that there's a bathroom in Saks Fifth Avenue, which is the Saks Fifth Avenue. Right. It was pretty clean. Yeah. We get there. I felt really bad for the women, though. Yeah. What's up with that? Why is the, why is the women line always so long? As if women haven't gone through enough. The line was so long and there was no line for the men's room. I wanted to be like, y'all come in here, but there was only one stall in the men's room and the rest of it was urinals. But I I feel like honestly, most men are not washing their hands. Yeah, but there's something about, I don't know, because I don't think the velocity and the time length of which people are peeing is that different. Granted, women have to go into a stall, make sure it's clean, and then take off their clothing and, and sit or squat or whatever. And men are just like zipping them out and then throwing them Oh my God, in. if you're wearing a one piece. But I'm saying the line different, the line difference was like zero for them, zero for the men. And we're looking like 50, I'm not joking, like 50 women deep for the Saks Fifth Avenue bathroom. I would have said, I would have said pushing 100. I'm you not kidding. Too, I think you can fit a lot more urinals than you can stalls. Okay, that's valid. But still, I'm very confused on why it's always, everywhere you go, the women are always fighting for their lives. And I feel terrible. I and do too. I was like, oh, I felt really bad. I, I felt know. guilty. Because we got in and out in 30 seconds and they were probably waiting there for 30 minutes. I know. So we get through, we get back out of Sixth, uh, Sixth, Saks Fifth Avenue and we go to see the tree. Directly across the street, you guys, is the tree. I would say it probably took us a solid 10 minutes to go from one corner to the other. That's how many people were walking in different directions. I have been in a lot of tight spaces in my life, like a lot of concerts. Never in my life have I experienced such insane like pressure. Like I had people that were digging into one rib and then someone digging in on the opposite rib. Like I was actually being like suffocated. And as a five foot two king, I'm not tall. I am eye line with pretty much everybody there. And it was a little 
anxiety inducing. I think I was a little lit because we were drinking all day. Thank God. But if I was in a bad uh, space or if you have a hard time with being on top of people, oh my God. I will actually say this is the first time I would recommend not doing something based on crowds because it was like wall to wall. Like people actually were touching you from every angle. Yeah, because everybody's walking in a different direction. And I've been sucked into a mosh pit before. Yeah, you've, yeah, you I was seeing the offspring. They were great live, but I did get sucked into the mosh pit and punched multiple times. This was scarier than that because at one point we weren't moving and I couldn't move. And also there's strollers and there's like children and I'm not trying to like step on anybody's toes quite literally. It was, it was hard. It was rough. It was scary. It was spooky. It was creepy. Yeah, no. And it was all to see the tree, which really is, it's beautiful. It's amazing. But it, at the end of the day, you guys, most of our listeners have a tree in their house. Like we all have our own tree. So I don't know if I would ever do that again. But it was also a Saturday night. It was unseasonably warm. Yeah, we, we put ourselves there. Yeah, but you know what? None of us complained. We really didn't. We got no, through it. By the power of Christmas. And we snuck down a side street where you can definitely see the full tree. And we got our picture that we're going to show here. We'll post it on the Instagram as well. So like it was nice to see the tree. It, but we didn't even get to see the ice skating rinks there or at Bryant Park because we could never, ever get close enough and at that point i was like fine by getting the tree i was like we can take it across the street i don't even care if it's blurry if my eyes are closed i'm good i'm set let's get home because it's going to be another hour trek to get on the subway and make it back to camp shady birch it feels like if you're looking to do christmas this new york and this will hold up for next year as well i think the weekends are not the move i think during the week we lucked out last year because it was during the weekend it was kind of rainy i feel like we went really early too did not we go like early early december it wasn't that early but it was after thanksgiving oh. but i have been seeing people like on Facebook groups and on TikTok being like, we went out at 5 a.m. and it was absolutely perfect. There was no crowds anywhere. It's like, bitch, I am not waking up at 5 a.m. to look at a fucking Christmas tree. I do not care. I will look it up on Google at that point. And you know what's really interesting about the Rockefeller Christmas tree? Wow. I did some research on this. Did you guys know the tree is donated every single year? They don't give the people money. There's this one gardener who's been working for the Rockefeller like, I don't know, Green Center, whatever it's called, like the greenhouse, <laughs> bitch. And he has been doing this for like over a decade. And a part of his job is during the summertime, he will go out and like find the tree. A lot of times it's from um, Pennsylvania, shockingly, because they're looking for this very specific tree. I think it's a Norwegian spruce that seems right right now. So I'm going to go for it. And they have a lot in Pennsylvania, but sometimes they find them in Vermont. And this year it ended up being upstate New York. So essentially this guy will just pull up in your driveway and be like, hey, I like your tree. I work for Rockefeller Center. Would you consider donating your tree to bring joy, hope, and laughter and love to millions of people? What do you think about that? The tree's, it's tall. So it's got to be like at least 100 years old. Am it, I, I wrong say, in saying that? I would say at that? least 100. I would say at least 100. Yeah, it's meaty. It's tall. It's it's a perfect it's specimen. Massive. So is this man driving around the suburbs of Pennsylvania, like on the lookout? Do people not, like, I feel like it would be easier if people were like, look at my juicy tree. I and want to be that girl. Sometimes you can. Sometimes they have had people that have like gone out and submitted their tree. But this these people didn't submit. So I don't know how he found them or if there was like a sneaky link in the neighborhood that was like sending pictures from the side because he just pulled up and they didn't know anything and they got to go to the lighting ceremony and be like we're so happy that we got to donate our tree and i i hate to be like that bitch but i'm like okay like i would have been like okay can i get some money or something like yeah there, there should be because now there's a so the tree's gonna last like two months maximum yeah now that it's been dug out and it's been you know all these crazy lights are on it but the, the, those people now don't have a tree for like the rest of eternity unless they're going to spend the money to replace it. It just feels like Rockefeller is like, oh, it's it's a, a powerful, powerful place. Lots of money there. Maybe like a hundred dollar gift card to Macy's, another Christmassy store. That would be great. Know. Put them up. I'm sure they got put up into a hotel. Well, I Can you hope imagine if they did it. They're like, hey, take the train back. They got to come to the lighting ceremony. Their family was very happy to do it. Well, that's nice. Would you guys, campers, would you let the Rockefellers take your tree? I guess. I don't know. Maybe I would say yes. I don't think so. I get, like, really attached to things, especially, like, trees are living, you know? So I'm like, I want to see that little silly tree outside my window. And that tree's living its craziest life. It's like, chop me down. I was in the suburbs of pennsylvania and now i'm standing in the middle of the city that i didn't even know existed i like, know trees don't know i know they need to make a children's book 
Um, big trees, big trees, great escape. The Giving Tree. The Giving Tree is already a book, so we can't take that license. Damn it. Well, guys, Christmas in New York is definitely a joyful time. It can be chaotic. I have no regrets though. Like it was a good story. It was crazy. The pictures I have of me in the crowd are like absolutely unhinged because you can see how tight it was. But um, definitely put some organization into that and maybe visit the tree during the daylight. I think that turn to dusk at 4.30 was not, not the move. Attention campers, please meet at the old flagpole under the tall pine for morning announcements. Welcome back to morning announcements. But before we do our morning announcements, we do have a little bit of housekeeping from weeks previous. I don't even know if it would be considered how house- isn't housekeeping when you have to like make a correction. Well, it's just an update. I don't know what to okay. say. Yeah, we're housekeeping. Well, yeah, Shut up. exactly. Do you want to go first? Um, yes. So we did mention a couple episodes ago when we forgot to address it, that we were looking for names for our squirrel here. Hopefully in one of our cameras, it's catching. Actually, let me, let me pick, pick her right up. So this is the squirrel who was looking for a name. We did get a lot of good suggestions, but the one we're going to go with is Princess Squirrel. It just makes sense. It just makes sense. It's a natural transition for the show. We have Princess Girl and Princess Squirrel. We're really... It just makes sense, campers. We have Princess Girl, now we have Princess Squirrel, and I think it's a lovely festive Christmas addition to our set, but it sucks because Princess Girl lives on all year long, but Princess Squirrel will be put away in a bin until next year. But she will be coming out next year. We're not getting rid of her. Also, we have some tea. So, oh my God, you're not, you're literally not going to believe this, campers. The other day I'm reading, I'm, I'm reading a book in my bed. And I was like really in the zone. I looked at my phone. I had a missed call and a voicemail from an 800 number. I was like, okay, clearly this is spam. And you know, when you go on your iPhone and you click the voicemail and it will say like a little like text. Like a transcript. Transcript from the voicemail. Yes. The first line is, hello, Zachariah. This is so-and-so from like the director of customer relations at Raymore and Flanagan. We had listened to your recent podcast episode, and we'd love to follow up with you on your experience. Please call me back at this number. Are you fucking kidding me, you guys? The drama at Raymore and Flanagan has gone up the beanpole to the corporate office. I cannot believe it. That was not my intention. I was telling a story about what happened, and everything I said stands true, but I did not. I did not call back. I didn't call back. No, you can't. No, because now I feel like she's going to get in trouble. And nothing I say is going to help because how she got my number is she clearly went in the system, searched my name, and then found my contact information because it was delivered to our freaking house. And like they have my phone number on file. So clearly in those transactions, she can see the manager that was on that I worked with. And I feel terrible that that person got in trouble. And I'm not going to call back and add to the flames of what happened during that altercation. But what I said stands, and I feel bad. And for clarification, if you didn't listen to that episode, it's titled um, Getting Confrontational at Raymore and Flanagan or something like that. And during the Take a Hike, Your Take a Hike was the situation that happened. We're not going to go into details, but it was not good, and you can listen to it there if you missed it. I think they might have had the Google alert mm-hmm. for Raymore and Flanagan, and, and it, it just came out. It popped up, but not her being like, we listened to the podcast. I'm like, okay, new camper. <laughs> 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 oh my god but it's like that moment where this your stomach drops down to your butt but we you know it wasn't slander you weren't talking shit you, we didn't get specific we were just well i was talking shit but it was but shit experience. can be correct yeah, yeah. The shit can be correct like, and it is it is what it is but we don't want anybody to lose their jobs especially not around the holidays no and if it, raymore and flanagan is listening i don't want you to fire her i just want it to be known that i had a bad experience and i will no longer be shopping at your establishment ever again but that's on me and not on her um, <laughs> moving forward, this is morning announcements. This is the sh- this is the part of the episode where we share um, news articles with you that you might have missed that we feel like you should know. A lot of holiday chatter this time of year. A lot of parties. Sometimes you don't know what to say, and these are things you can bring up and be like, "Well, did you hear about that?" So. We're doing the Lord's work here. You're so welcome. Uh, do you want to go first? Yeah, I would love to go first. If I may. Yes, please do. All right. So my article is coming from USA Today, and it's by Eric Lagara. And um, the title is, Mystery of a Tomato Missing in Space for Months Has Been Solved and a Man Exonerated. Was someone in trouble? Let me get into it. Okay. So I saw the title. I was like, a tomato missing in space. 
I'm there. Okay. So astronaut Frank Rubio, he made history in September when he had a 371 day orbit that made him the American with the record for the longest space flight. What's he just like flying around the, the earth? Um, he was in the International Space Station or the ISS. Are you familiar? Oh, I'm familiar. So I like knew what it was, but I was like, let me take a look at like, let me just see what it looks like. I know it looks like a big satellite, but I really don't know much about it. Can I tell you a couple of fun facts? Yeah, of course. So on their website, it says that the International Space Station is larger than a six bedroom house with six sleeping quarters, two bathrooms, a gym and a 360 degree bay window. So I was like, wow, okay. Oh my right. God. I want the room closest to the bay window. <laughs> so the space station has been continuously occupied since November 2000. I had no clue. Oh, so there's just someone always there. Well, I guess it would be kind of dangerous to keep it locked up. Yeah. Turn the lights off. We're going home for the holidays. And people like rotate like sometimes yeah. like one to two people at a time. I don't know if that's completely factual. I could be making that up. But from this story, what I was gathering was that like one person was leaving. Someone else was coming. So it was like always just like a rotating of like, welcome to the crew. I wonder if anyone ever fell in love. <gasps> Love in space. Someone has got to have fallen in love. There has to have been a little tryst, a relationship, a rendezvous up in the International Space Station. What an elite member. If we have any campers who happen to have been there, that would be incredible. I want to know, are there any stories of love in space? Oh my God, sex in space? Oh my God, fluids flowing. Oh, Okay, so uh, an international crew of seven people live and work while traveling at the speed of five miles per second, orbiting the Earth every 90 minutes. So in my head, I'm like, when they try to get on it, I know that it's all scientific, but like, how the fuck do they catch up to that thing? I'd be like, whoa, whoa, wait, whoa, whoa, slow down. Wait, they go around the entire Earth in 90 minutes? Um, Yeah, I don't know how that math is mathing, but that's what it says on so their official website. age super fast up there? Now, that's a question that needs to be answered. I don't think so, because time is relative. But I don't know what that means. I hate when people say time is relative because I'm so dumb and I don't know what they're saying. And somebody once did like a display on like a fabric sheet and they're like, this is time and this is space. And they put a ball in the middle that weighed it down and it like affected the the marbles around it. And they were like, that is how time is affected in space. And I'm like, bitch, huh? Yeah, it's like, I'm almost like annoyed with those kind of people. It's like, I, I see that you're trying to help here, but now I'm just annoyed because the minute they started that example, I've already tuned out. We have to watch Interstellar because I feel like for... The I remember watching that movie and they put it in terms <laughs> that I could digest. One thing, one thing about me, I do not have to watch Interstellar. No, I think you do. I have to watch the Real Housewives franchise because that is something that I will keep the oral history alive of. Okay. That is my anthropology. I'm not a scientist. I am an anthropologist. But you love An um, An Annie, Annie Hathy, Anna, Anna oh, Hathaway. I am a Hathaway head for You're sure. Hathaway. Make Hathaway. <laughs> I'm coming through. I made sense in my head. Okay. <laughs> Let's get back to it. So in 24 hours, the space station makes 16 orbits around Earth, traveling through 16 sunrises and 16 sunsets. That just seems like dizzying and confusing. Is it all solar powered? The sun's always out up there. And now you're asking questions. I don't know the answer. I think that's what the arms are. The right, yeah, they don't have clouds. We we sound so dumb. We need to stop talking about what we think it is. I'm literally just trying to tell facts about stuff that I don't know anything about. Okay, just like <laughs> let me freaking be. Okay, and then okay, here's my last fun fact about it before I move on to the rest of the story. Okay, to mitigate the loss of muscle and bone mass in the body, because think about it: when you're standing on Earth, you're using your muscles, right? Um, the oh, astronauts, you're right. yeah, the astronauts are required to work out two times a day. I'm out. I'm not an astronaut. At one well, point, I thought I could be. Absolutely not. Well, turn off the zero gravity in, in the machine and let me walk around for a minute. Yeah, it's just like, let me recalibrate. Also, what are your organs doing? What are they doing in there? Does oh everybody, all, all, everything's staying intact? Like, how do I know my liver's not floating above? I don't know what's above the liver. I was going to give an example. I hate I don't to break know. it to you. I think it's a lot more tight in there than you think it is. I don't think there's a lot of room for error. I read a tweet one time that was like, my bones are wet 100% of the time and I can't stop thinking about that. And I think about that often. Well, I'd rather have a wet bone than a dry bone. That's so true. So I'm glad I'm wet. <laughs> I'm actually really happy I'm wet, everybody. So try to make fun of me being wet because I'm happy I'm wet. So I'm soaked. So let me tell you a little bit about Veg 05 experiment. Okay. 
they're up there for a long time and obviously they need fresh produce. You know, they have their freeze dried ice cream sandwiches that they sell at the museum. So fine. And it's in my head all they're eating. But they do have like <laughs> little gardens and that's what the Veg uh, 05 experiment was. So this guy, Frank Rubio, he tended to their garden as it experienced an unexpected humidity drop. Astronauts were asked to eat tomatoes grown under different light temperatures and rate them based on factors like flavor, texture, and juiciness. Oh my God, that's fun. And then they were going to also bring some samples back to Earth for scientific analysis. Oh, to compare if the space tomato was different than the Earth tomato. Can you imagine just walking through Wegmans or like, it was so Erwan. Like, oh, this, this is our international space system ruby red dwarf tomato was grown in outer space not to get political here but how much money are we spending on space tomatoes when we have poverty like stricken the entire world and a massive homelessness issue like i'm not saying what i'm bringing to the table is super helpful on a global level but like i don't think my budget annually is what the space institute budget is so let that be known please agreed and understand where you're coming from however they are like harvesting these vegetables to eat while they're up there yeah like they want fresh food like while up there so anyway um enter the red dwarf tomato so in march 2023 frank was harvesting his crops when one tomato slipped away they ended up looking for it and they were like i don't know this thing is literally just like <laughs> and it's just like spinning and flying out of reach but you've seen like the inside of of like uh, the international space system or like any like astronauty thing you look at it and there's like tubes and switches and i'm like does everything have a purpose because that's a lot how did the tomato get outside it, no okay so it's inside it's inside the space system and it got out of the space system no it got out of the garden and it slipped away and the, the place is so huge and there's so many flips and switches they couldn't find it so oh it so got that away. is an issue that because yeah. if it gets something wet oh my god it gets clogged it turns into ketchup we don't want that oh my god wait so i want to hear the rest of the story so the um the team spends hours looking for it but they couldn't find it and he said in an article quote i'm sure the desiccated tomato will show up at some point to vindicate me years in the future because they were like it's lost there's too much going on in this space like let's it's there's like seven people in there and it's a six bedroom like somebody can find the time um but anyway frank goes back to earth and months later an astronaut named jasmine mogbelly finds the tomato the details in its appearance were not specified, nor was its location, but she did, in fact, <sighs> locate it, I know. Why are they? That's what the details we're looking for. Was it shriveled? And where was it? Like, wh that's what I really care about here. So they had, like, a NASA live stream that I was watching when they were talking about this. There wasn't a lot of views on it. I'm like, guys, come on. Like, this is cool. Like, let's talk about this. Um, It was very awkward because there was a delay and they were passing around a floating microphone and nobody seemed to really want to speak on any matters. But anyway, they talked about finding the tomato and um and they sent it back to earth for um for experimenting and analyzing so i was more interested in knowing what it looked like and where it was found i searched high and low for hours it seemed uh and i couldn't find it Did so he get in trouble was he like in trouble for <laughs> losing it or they uh, you know i don't know i don't think it was preferred but i i i think he'll go back to space because he was up there for a long time you know and as an avid crop harvester myself a la farmville i thought it was a very interesting story yeah how we're exploring farming techniques on the moon or whatever in outer space yeah um but it, I, as i was watching the live stream i'm like no one is sitting comfortably. They're all floating in space. Nobody's strapped down, but they're all in a sitting position with their arms like, like this, or their arms are sitting out like this where it would be on your legs, but they're just floating above their bodies. It's like the most awkward looking thing. Like it looks fake. Yeah. But I just don't think there's any comfortable way to just exist in space. How would you, how would you weather in space, you think? Oh, not well, bitch. Not well? How would you? Um, I think I'm built different. <clears throat> I think I could do it. You think? Yeah. I get okay. car sick really easily, but if I can get past like the getting up there, I could hang out for a little bit. Yeah, I got sick on mission space. So Well, we can't really compare the Disney ride to the actual space. Well, the dizziness, the dizzy Disney 
ride will knock me out for a little bit. Give me they a Klonopin. You have a job you have to do. Oh, pish posh. What happens Ooh. if you encounter somebody you have to press the red button to shoot at the other in- intergalactic invader? This is, people did not tune into this episode to talk about science with us. Who knows why people tuned into this episode? But they're getting an education. Yeah, that's the thing. That's something we do here. We we do educate you guys. It's a rubbish education, but it's an education oh, it's nonetheless. Absolutely rubbish. So that's my story. What have you got for us? Well, back on Earth, Red Lobster lost a whopping 11 million dollars in profit thanks to its popular endless shrimp promotion i could see this coming so listen guys this wasn't space shrimp this was earth shrimp (laughs) (laughs) to clarify (laughs) okay so this article is from salon.com by joy saha so if you're i'm sorry i love that salon.com by joy saha (laughs) (laughs) salon.com by joy saha that is fun to say salon.com by joy saha wait i love that (laughs) Salon.com by Joyce the Hawk. Okay, let's get to it. Let's it, go. It, it, the way you, your mind works a fabulous way, Jonathan. I it's love it. dark and scary sometimes. So if you're unfamiliar with Red Lobster, which we do have a lot of international campers, and we have to like kind of preface what Red Lobster is for our campers who are not Americans, it's essentially like a seafood chain restaurant. Um, so it's, it's like American, we love a chain restaurant. Yeah. I don't know if other countries or places in the world do it quite like we do it. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so well, they specialize in shrimp, lobster, crab, and those sassy little Cheddar Bay biscuits. Mm, they're so good, so salty, so bad for you. We'll get into that a little bit later. But for the last 18 years, Red Lobster has done this promotion called the Never Ending Shrimp. Um, so it's like once a year for about like a month. And you could pay $20 and go to a Red Lobster and order a shrimp entree. And they would just keep refilling your shrimp until you tapped out. That sounds like a really good deal. That sounds so American to me. It's like, that is so American. Nobody needs that much shrimp, let's be honest. So back in the day, it would like for 18 years, it would only come for like a very small window of the year. But this past June, Red Lobster decided to permanently keep it on their menu. Uh oh. Also, I forgot to say that my brother in law sent me this article. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Ray. Yeah, I should have said that earlier because Ray sent me his article as like a joke. He's like, you guys should talk about this on the podcast. And I was like, absolutely, we're going to talk about this on the podcast. This is like so our brand. So sorry, really quickly. Thank you, Ray. Um, So this ultimately led to a major problem, the company said in its third quarter earnings. More customers took advantage of the promo, which in turn led to Red Lobster, Red Lobster's $11 million loss in the third quarter of 2023. It did bring in overall more business um like it, i think they were up like four percent from last year but it more people were just getting this, this yeah i was gonna say there's an asterisk next to that because bringing in more people bringing in more foot traffic those people are leaving with a lot more a lot more food well i don't blame them because i think they thought like oh like not everyone's gonna get it but it will get people in the door but i went online and i like looked at like what is included in this and all the different types of shrimp do you want to hear? Please. Wait, it actually sounds... Well, now this kind of sucks because I'll never be able to get it. Is it it's no, it's, normal stuff no, that's it's, like on the menu. It's still going on and we'll get to that in a little bit. Okay. So... Oh, it, wait. Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll jump to that because now you seem questioning. Yeah. So it was $20 and they, their way to like try to offset this loss is to increase the price of it to $25. Okay. I still think that's not bad. No. Okay. Not at all. Do you want to hear the shrimp offerings that you can get? Yeah, please. So it's called um, Ultimate Endless Shrimp. SM. What does SM stand for? Not trademark. Um, Suggestion, maybe. We're not sure. Mix and match options like the new crispy dragon shrimp. I can't even tell me to like that. Is it like charbroiled because dragons breathe fire? Or is it like spicy and like a purple sauce? It's crispy and I think it's tossed in like a Thai chili sauce, I can Mm. only imagine. That sounds good. Mm -hmm. The garlic shrimp scampi. Can't go wrong. Oh my God, shrimp scamping. Grilled shrimp skewer. Okay. The para isle jumbo coconut shrimp, classic to me. You just can't, you can't, you can't mess with it. Yeah, Walt's favorite shrimp. Now, one thing about Walt, he has a favorite shrimp, and it's it's dynamite that Disney man. I knew you were going to ask or or make a comment about that because I had to go in and look at what Walt's um, favorite shrimp is, and it kind of looks like a large breaded shrimp. Oh, he's a basic boy. With a cocktail sauce? Yeah, of course. It's fine. I would not choose it out of the others. I think the only one that I wouldn't choose is the skewer. Well, there's more. Oh, sorry. Shrimp linguine Alfredo. No, that's that's heavy. I like that because it's like sometimes you get a couple different options. I don't need all just like bare bone shrimp here. Quick question before you continue. Uh Uh-huh. If this is the endless shrimp and the linguine, is it also... 
endless linguine. So let me tell you, I'm going to get there. Okay. So lastly is the popcorn shrimp. And then it says this. Now this is where you've really piqued my interest. Choose three to start. And when you're ready, we'll bring you more. Serve with your choice of side. So I'm pretty sure you can mix and match. Shut up. I'm pretty sure you can mix and match. And this is still happening? Yes. Why are we sitting here? So you don't have to stick with the linguine Alfredo. I would like that as a little... Mm, ooh, ooh. No, the linguine is taking up way too much real estate. Yeah, but I don't need just straight shrimp to the gut like that. I, it's I, great protein. I will give some space for my linguine. Okay. Um, so maybe what happens is you get three and then when you want to refill, they're probably not going to refill all three. They're probably going to give you one refill at a time at that point. Yeah. And it's non-sharing. No, it's yeah, as, as it should be. You shouldn't be able to yeah. share that. And people will get all weird about that. But it's like, no shit, it's non-sharing. Like, Yeah, you're just going to order one for the whole table. Then that's like everybody's down. Yeah. So I think it sounds incredible. It's now up to $25. I still think that's quite a deal. I would go Hungry Campers if you're interested. But really quickly here, before we leave our Red Lobster conversation, I just want to congratulate them on the Cheddar Bay Biscuit. Yeah. Oh my God. So if you're not familiar with the Cheddar Bay Biscuit, it's the complimentary bread offering when you do arrive at a Red Lobster. They put uh, four of these little biscuits on your table. My fucking God are these things dynamite. Mm -hmm. They're salty. They're buttery. They're garlicky. They're cheesy. They're like these little warm pockets of sunshine. And I think they're incredible. Um, guess how many calories that one Cheddar Bay Biscuit is? 840. Nope, 160. I don't 160? Think, yeah, but how many do you eat? Oh. You never just have does one. Not exist. Okay, and so then I compared it to Olive Garden. Okay. Because they have, they're very similar restaurant concepts. They were owned by the same company. They're basically the same restaurant in different fonts at this point. So guess how many um, are in a breadstick? Calories. 120. 140. Mm. Would you rather have an Olive Garden breadstick or a, a Red Lobster Cheddar Bay Biscuit? Cheddar Bay Biscuit. A hundred percent. It's like no competition. The Olive here. Garden breadsticks, like they're fine. They can be better if they're made correctly. They're just okay to me. But you guys, did you guys know that you can buy the Cheddar Bay Biscuits at your lo local grocer? Yeah, I have. I made them one time. Were they good? I burnt the bottom of them. Oh, it's and okay. The okay. mix was so. I think there's two salts. Oh, it's a to box mix. I thought it's it was a box frozen. Mix. No, it's a box mix. Oh. Um, and I just think it's just way too salty. I, they're honestly a little salty they're, in the store. They're always a, if they could tone down the salt a little bit. I'm already bloating. Maybe that's part of their thing. They like want you to bloat up a little bit. Yeah, fill up on the bread so you don't fill up on that endless shrimp. Yeah, it's just a little too salty for my taste, but still good. I know. Well, I had a bunch of stuff about Olive Garden. Should I talk about it or should I say that for a different episode? Well, hold on. Do you have any more about? Because I feel like we. I still have a couple questions. I don't even know if you have to answer, but I. I, I just want to talk about yeah. how much money did they lose? Eleven million dollars. In why, the third quarter. Why are they still doing it then? Because it's such a competitive place right now for restaurants. Okay, well, come it's, up with a different, come up with something else. They vibes. can't invent a different sea creature to eat, babe. No, but they can come up with something else that's like either endless or like a really good menu option or something. Their entire business is on quite possibly the most expensive category of food. Seafood, it's not a cheap price point. It's not like Olive Garden, which I was going to talk about. They're Pa they're doing never-ending pasta, okay? You know how cheap it is to make pasta for the masses? Insane. And they're not selling it at that much of a cheaper price point here. So it's just like they can't get shrimp at a lower cost. Well, have like a karaoke night or like a bingo night. I'm trying to draw in the crowds. Take the endless off because clearly it's not going well for them. I know, but I'm just saying, okay, they're, they did an overall improvement of business it just sales were at a loss and I, I i'm curious to see if 25 uh, 25 dollars a plate will bring up the revenue at the end of the day I, i'm not going to sweat it if, if red lobster goes out of business it was no. never in my top five it was never in my top 15 to oh. be quite honest oh that's sad though we don't want to say that why can't I have an opinion? I don't like no, it you that No, you can. I'm just trying to prevent the universe from making it happen because I do, every once in a while, I want some red lobster and I don't want that to I be can, taken away. I can count on as many, I can count on one hand as many times I've been a red lobster. I guess I'm from New England, so if I want good seafood, I'll get yeah, good of course. seafood. Yeah, but when you're landlocked, it's like, take me take me down to red lobster. I, if he fucks me good, I take his ass to red lobster. I know. Beyonce did her best with her marketing ploy. And here we are, following in the footsteps of Beyonce, letting you guys know that red lobster still exists mm. i wonder if we have any like red lobster heavy campers out here who like love it heavy who's working at red lobster right now listening to this did you raise your hand because we can't <laughs> see it <laughs> well i wanted to say that i worked at olive garden oh yes 
which was they were owned by the same company. So when I started Olive Garden back in 2013, they were still owned by the same company. That's why I think they're like the same restaurant in different fonts. Who at Disney? Who owns that? Uh, um, Darden. So it's not Walt. But then no, it's not. But then they 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 then they sold Red Lobster to another like company. So they're no longer a part of the Darden family. Oh no, she got adopted. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Interesting story, and I'm I'm sorry to hear about. Sorry for your loss, literally. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Grab your bug juice and bear spray campers. It's time to pack it up and take a hike. Welcome back to Take a Hike. This is the part of the show where we bitch a little. We might swear. We might swear more than usual. And we tell something to take a hike. So what am I telling to take a hike today, you may ask? <laughs> You may ask. Uh, Jonathan, what are you taking? telling to take a hike today? Oh, I don't want to talk about it. Oh, <laughs> well, be, please be brave. That this was a share circle. That wasn't very yes and of me. <laughs> so this, I feel like I may have talked about this before, but I honestly, I don't care. Um, have you guys ever, you know, it is the season for ice skating outdoors. Yep. Yeah, it's it's quite possibly the time of year to do it. And I did grow up on the ice rink. Um, these thighs do not lie. So there's <laughs> nothing I hate more in this very moment than showing up to an ice skating rink in a public space that was advertised as ice skating, only to find that it is literally made of plastic. We need to, as a society, come together and demand to be told the truth because the false advertising in these ice skating events that are truly not ice skating is unbelievable. What are they made of? Did you look it up? It's called, what is it called? It's called polyglide ice. Oh, so it's trademarked. Something like that. I don't know. I, honestly, I don't care. That sounded so real, babe. If you made that up, polyglide ice. <laughs> you're such Well, a I saw it called that, but I don't know. So a lot of like... Um, hockey players will use it to train on. Bullshit. And I get it. If you're in California and you want to pretend to ice skate, sure, go ahead and use it. But you cannot advertise we have ice skating and then give us a like real ice skates and then put us on cutting boards because that's literally what they are. And it feels like nine out of ten times when there's these pop-up ice skating events, it is the fake ice. And it's like, you know what I want? I'm demanding someone to get a garden hose. Yeah. Someone to put up some nets. And put a refrigerator underneath the ice. I don't know how you're gonna. I don't know how you're gonna do it. But if you're gonna charge us thirty five dollars, you're gonna do it right. Because I'm not doing these fake cutting board ice skating experiments anymore. I'm not doing it. We just want some clarity on it. It's like going to Morton's Steakhouse and ordering a porterhouse for two, and then the waiter brings you a Salisbury steak. Or you've never even eaten steak, so the analogy there is just so funny that you did that. It's like watching Halloween Town Four and expecting Kimberly J. Brown and getting Sarah Paxton. It's not I, right. It's not what I ordered. It's not what I expected. No, see, that's an analogy I can get behind. We're big Kimberly J. Brown fans in this house. Yes, is she a camper? Who knows? She does follow us both. So I just—it's so annoying when they advertise it as such. Now, I, what I will say is, we went to the World Trade Center and they had roller skates. They had the they had the polyglide ice skating rink and they had roller skates and I said now that is fun that is fine you can choose between skates or blades and that's nice. It was so campy because it was like a it looked like a little fake ice skating rink with like little blow up snowmen and stuff but it was roller skating and I was like this is cute. Yeah. Like, same same sport different font much like the Olive Garden Red Lobster debate you yeah. know so but back to the fake ice skating I see I see where you're coming from and I do wholeheartedly agree that that is just it's got to go. So uh, one of my first viral TikToks ever it might be like still my most viewed it had like well over 10 million views. Mm -hmm. And it was me reacting to people on this ice that I had never seen before. It was a couple years ago. I didn't tag where I was. I didn't say anything about it. I didn't say anything in the comments about where I was. And that location reached out to me the following year. And they were like, hey, thanks for the helpful criticism. We have real ice this year. So I did something good for society. Yeah, you moved the needle. Yeah, you know, not to pat myself on the back, but I am better <laughs> than most. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, and I've been seeing a lot of heat too publicly about these like fake ice skating rinks since I like there was those like pop up winter markets in New York this year, and people were complaining once again about the fake ice. You just can't advertise ice skating if yeah. it's not real ice. You really can't. And you and I went last year, and we did talk about it on the podcast because I remember putting the footage in. You, me, and Emma, we went, and it. I didn't process it. We were ice skating on a rooftop. 
So I was like, now how the hell are they going to get the ice way up there? A hose. It's not that incredible to think about as a concept. Do but it, it was the polyglide. Yeah. It, it was the polyglide. That, does, that Honestly, that sounds like a KY jelly. Like the old polyglide, like a, mm-hmm. like a PVC based lube. Okay. That's, that doesn't sound healthy. Stick to water based or oil based, I guess. Anyway, so that's my take a hike. I'm just, I'm frustrated. I'm annoyed. And we just need more clarification when it comes to... To ice skating. Yeah, and you're an incredible ice skater. Thank you. I can't save my life, but I want to see you have your moment. I want to see you do your... Can you do any tricks? Um, can you I, skate backwards? I can skate backwards. That's a trick. Yeah. I can't really do... I can, like, spin, but I can't, like, twirl like a figure skater. But I just, like... I can do a hockey stop. I can do a Ollie 360. Who's your favorite ice skater? Pop shove it. Um, Nancy Kerrigan. Oh, that's nice. That's not true. It just came to me. I like Michelle Kwan. Oh, yeah. Iconic. Iconic. That's Iconic. Oh, wow. Iconic Michelle Kwan. Mm. I love that. So what's your take a hike? Um, my take a hike this week is um, when I wear a Yankees hat and I'm berated online. <laughs> no, okay. it's... No, it's true. I've seen the comments, but I didn't know it was weighing so heavy. I need people to realize that if I'm wearing a sports-affiliated hat... It has nothing to do with the team, only the color scheme that matches the outfit. I don't give a fuck about baseball, football, hockey, basketball. I don't care. But if the hat is green and the sweater is green, that's why I bought the hat. So when people go in my DMs and I wear a Yankees hat and they say, I can't believe you would rep the Yankees when you're from Massachusetts as if I care about either of the sports teams. And I know that's a really big kind of like, I don't know. There's like a big rivalry there because I grew up there. But like I live in New York now. So I'm going to wear a Yankees hat because what am I going to do? I get attacked if I'm wearing a Red Sox hat here. I bought the brown Yankees hat because it matched the jacket. And that's as deep as the thought went there. Stop asking gay people questions about sports. Okay. Leave us out of it. We just thought the hat looked nice. Most of us at least. Yeah. And it compliments the outfit. Well, I was just while you were talking, I was looking up hot. Um, Yankees players. I didn't see any, but there's this guy named Cody Bellinger and he's kind of hot. Who was... Okay, let's talk about hot sports players. Let's get into this real quick. I always thought Alex Rodriguez was hot. A-Rod? Yeah. Yeah. I don't love J-Lo. And I'm going to publicly say it. You can say, this is take a hike. This is a, this is the umbrella. This is like... Yeah. People can skip ahead if they don't want to hear us bitch and, and just talk shit. I don't trust her. And I don't know her, but I've heard things through the grapevine, through people that we know personally yeah. who've worked with her and been like, she's just not a nice person. And I don't I don't get any good vibes from her, you know? And she broke A-Rod's heart, and that was the line for me. Because as you guys know, I'm a huge baseball player fan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sammy Sosa? I don't know. Um, I don't know any other ones. Yeah, so we can just leave it at that. Yeah, so stop yelling at me for wearing the team that you thought I should be wearing because either way, I'm not watching any of the games. I'm just buying the hats. Yeah, it is funny because I did wear that yesterday and we went to Benihana and our waiter looked at my hat and then he said, we have the football game on in the other room if you want to move. The the, the Jets are on if you're into that kind of stuff. And I wanted to be like, does it look over that kind of stuff? Yeah, I was like, unless it's a hot tub, I'm not into the Jets. Oh, (laughs) That was clever. How do you think of that so fast? Just falls out. You're so funny. It's like a fart. I can't help it. Okay, so which one do you think was worse? Which one do you think is worse? The the the, the fake ice. Me too. Because like, there's money on the line. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And it's like it's it's it, the fake ice is just it's a scam. It's a real scam. It's a scam. It's catfished. And honestly, I think there's a lawsuit somewhere in there. Mm-hmm. Oh, maybe they could bring catfish to the never ending Red Lobster. <laughs> there's. <laughs> Wow, there's that came full circle. There's an opportunity there for business. See, we're just a big old think tank here at Camp Shady Birch Campers. <sighs> we really get down to the nitty gritty from space to food to winter activities to sports. We cover it all here. To sh- end the shrimp in abundance. Okay, moving on. Do you think the new counselor likes the top bunk or the bottom bunk? Over. Either way, I'm giving them my boondoggle keychain. Over. Welcome back. To Camper Crush of the Week, okay? We're back on our bullshit. We're back on our happy, positive, uplifting energy. Who deserves an accolade this week? Who are you giving your medal of honor to? Jonathan, would you like to take us away? Sure. So, <laughs> as you know, why are you laughing? Sure. sure. Wait, you know who I miss? Can I give a little shout out real quick, please? Who do you miss? Is it an athlete? Salon.com by Joyce Aha. Enough. <laughs> 
<laughs> Enough. <laughs> okay, she was my crush of the week, but I just didn't have her. I didn't know yet. Oh, that's sweet. Okay, She's I have another one. Okay. Go, 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 go. So as you, as we already talked about, my brother did come to visit us. And as you also know, campers, we did get a new mattress, which means we did a little shifting of the mattresses in the, the counselor cabin. Mm -hmm. So our guest room now had a new mattress, a queen size. However, mm -hmm. the old mattress that was there was a full size. Okay. And this all happened recently. So my brother was on his way and I was doing the laundry day of, and I was like, oh my God. I'm an idiot because all of our sheets that we have are full sized. So I can't even like, I can't do anything with this bad. And I'm not going to make him like sleep on a bare mattress. So I tell you, and we're like, okay, let's, while we're out, we'll just like stop somewhere. I don't know where we were thinking we were going to go to, but we had, we did end up passing a target later in the day, completely forgot to pick it up. So we get back home from all of our escapades in Manhattan during this Christmas time. And I'm like, oh shit. Like my brother's with us at this point. And I'm like, oh shit, we still don't have sheets for the bed. And I feel terrible. And I decide to download Instacart, right? The delivery app, Instacart. Yes, yes this yes. is not an ad, but if you would like to reach out, we our emails are available below. So we, I get Instacart and I'm like, okay, let me order one of these from like Target before they close. First off, the selection, very small, very ugly, but I'm not being picky. I'm like- No, because we really just need the fitted sheet. We had the comforter was fine. It was just the fitted sheet. Yeah, so I try to order the gray one, the queen size. So I put that in there and then they're like, well, if, if you're- shopper can't find this is there a replacement you would like or would you like a refund i said a replacement don't give me refund get me this other ugly thing with like cornflower blue like i don't care just as long as it's a queen size i like cornflower blue why is that considered ugly well it had actual flowers on it what's wrong with a flower a floral pattern no nothing especially in this situation i didn't care. i would have taken like lion king sheets no, those I, are comforting I, I really didn't care at that point so i i do get a notification that they didn't have the sheets and that my shopper had switched them. Enter Gretchen's, my Instacart shopper. Gretchen's, plural everybody. Gretchen's. So, so I see that Gretchen's had exchanged this. And the one that he did exchange it for was a full size set. So I message and I say, hi, I need a queen size. I don't care what it is. Can you just please get me a queen size? Thank you so much. Uh, queen size only is what I said. A good podcast name if someone's looking queen size only. Oh my God, I love that. I love that too. Sorry. Okay. Um, so then he messages back and he says, yes, it's queen size. Okay. Attitude. But I, I have faith in him because he's like, listen, he's shopping. He probably has his phone in one hand. He has a lot of stuff he has to do. Tis the season. It's a holiday. So I'm like, okay, I trust him. Even though on my end, it says full size sheets, mm -hmm. even though on my end, it says full size sheets. And then, then I get a notification after it says that my order is complete and he's on his way. I get a notification that says <laughs> it's a message from Gretchen's and he says it's full. I will refund. The only reason that we needed this was because my brother needed it and he needed it tonight. So I'm annoyed. And this is why I just, I don't trust people to do things for me. And I'm like, it's a queen anything. Like, I don't care. I'll pay whatever it is. And he says, can it be from another label, like another brand? And then as I'm typing back, he sends two question marks because I guess I was taking a little bit too long. And I was like, yes, I'll pay whatever, which honestly was my mistake because I did end up getting a charge of $95 for those sheets that we'll probably never use again. But then I'm like, you know what? He's on his way and I'm starting to get nervous. I'm like, okay, like I'm not going to be confrontational because he did what he had to do. He righted his wrong and it, it's, it is the season of giving. And I'm like, Gretch, Gretchen's, why are, like, why are we fighting? Are we fighting? Because he, he left me mm. on red then at that point. Yeah, but you're like, okay, I'm sorry that things got heated in the moment, but I appreciate you and I was just trying to make sure that everything got done. So now you feel guilty because of the behavior you were giving Gretchen. Yes, and he's approaching and he's approaching quickly. And I'm like, I'm nervous. And your brother was like, do you want me to go to the door? And you were like, no, 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 I need to handle this head on. Yeah, I had to handle it head on. And and I was like, what if he does? What if he's mad at me? What if he doesn't like me? What if he doesn't, doesn't like what I'm wearing? I don't know. All these things are racing through my head. And of then, course. and then he calls me. So because we're oh, that's sweet above messaging at this point. Because I think he's starting to see like it was rough at the beginning. It was a little tumultuous, right? But we made it through. And he calls me and he says, "Hey, I'm outside." Oh. So I go outside and he, he was shy. He was I was shy. He was shy. He was very nice. I did a slow blank like you do to a cat, like to let it know that you're not a threat, you know, like that. And yeah, we we made it through this tumultuous relationship. And for that reason, my camper cross of the week is my Instacart shopper, Gretchen. This is where Jonathan and I differ because that that interaction would have made him might take a hike, but somehow Jonathan is 
spinning spin this to be a positive story and well, make it his camper crush story. did it not have a positive ending i, I got think, what i yeah you did you got what you needed he did i realized that he had left the store and mm. he turned he turned around to go back and get what he had to do and i didn't realize he was driving he was driving through the city Ugh, he was driving so through annoying. the six with my walls i know so he literally had to do that and he was like so sorry about that i gave him five stars i gave him a good tip even though like you know it it could have went better but you know we turned it around and i'm holding space for love in my heart this holiday season and i think you can laugh all you want but i think that's the real takeaway here did you tell him about our podcast well i, I invited him inside no busy. i didn't he was busy <laughs> he was busy i saw he was busy I, I thought he was going in for a hug he was just handing me the bag it's fine it's it's fine but um but yeah that's he's my camper cars of the week and i just from the bottom of my heart it was my first instacart experience and it was nuts from start to finish i wish he was here i wish he was still with us Maybe. he's not dead but he's just physically well you'll never forget his name if you ever order again because gretchen's is plural and a woman's name and he was a man so gretchen's wieners gretchen's wieners like that yeah. So what's your camp crush? My camp crush this week is nature documentaries. Go on. I just think they don't get enough credit in the public space. They're consistent. They're always there for you. Yet we neglect to bring them up enough in conversation. And I really have come up with a couple of reasons why I believe that they are contributing greatness to the universe. Number one, they are educational. Is there something you've learned from a nature documentary that you can share today? I learned that whales eat krill and i that has stuck with me for a long time and i did learn that from a nature documentary yeah. exactly there's big takeaways i once watched a nature documentary that talked about this island um it's called round island off the coast of alaska and it's where a bunch of these walruses go and they hang out and they all like hop on top of each other it's like a big old hot dog sausage fest there on the on the beaches of the shore Loving it. and these walruses fly in their bodies everywhere mm. I never would have known that because I'm not close to this place in Alaska. How would I have ever found that out had it had not been for this nature documentary? Is it called Round Island because of their bodies? Well, I don't think it's a coincidence. <laughs> so possibly. Number two, there's usually a fabulous celebrity narrator. Bonus points for me if it's David Attenborough mm -hmm. because I am obsessed with that man. If you're familiar, he has done about like a thousand nature documentaries. His voice is so soothing. It is his life's mission, his passion. He is 97 years old. I don't know how many more he can do of these, but when he passes, we will put the flag at half mass here at Camp Shady Birch because he is a legend. I love David Attenborough. You've probably heard him on the Netflix ones. You've probably heard of his brother who did the voice of Winnie the Pooh. See, a fabulous, fantastic, famous family, the Attenboroughs. Um, number three, this is a really big one for you guys, um, for me as well. It's great for passive watching. Yeah. I love a show that doesn't demand my attention. I need something on for the background. I just want to scroll my phone, but I don't want to sit in silence. I have to go take a massive dump for 15 minutes. I can keep that thing playing and it doesn't really matter. I just pick it up where I left off and I can always turn it back on because there's something I always missed. You know what I mean? I think it's great for passive watching. Yeah, it's like a screensaver. Exactly, but with some with some animation and some sort of knowledge that comes with it. Mm -hmm. And then number four, um, it borderlines suspensefulness or a suspenseful energy at some points. I like how at certain points in the documentary, those they'll have like a chase scene or like the zebra is running for its life from the lions, and you're like, oh my god, will this zebra make it? Sometimes they don't, and sometimes they do, but that's just the that's just the nature's way. That's Mother Nature's kingdom, the animal kingdom, if you will. And that's the part where I literally <laughs> covered my eyes. I don't like that part. I really don't. That's the only part I'm like, can you fast forward? I do make you fast forward through it. I keep it on because I salute and and t tip my hat to all the editors and and filmers on these sites because the amount of work it must take to like film all this, to sift through all the projects and to make sure you're getting the best of the best. Because I'm sure a lot of it is just sit and wait. Sit and wait for that little lizard to put his tongue out at the perfect high definition moment so I can go, ooh, That's and so then scroll true. on Instagram for 15 minutes. That's so true. It's like, how long do these people wait out there for that one perfect moment that really just like flips right by? And I don't think we give them enough credit as a category of amazing contributions to art and science. Yeah, I'll agree. Another science piece on today's episode. Oh my God. I think we're gonna have to change our category from comedy to 
science. Yeah, I think we're up for a Pulitzer Prize after today's episode. Not sure what that is, but as soon as I look it up, I will be sure of that. I want us to win an award. I really have always just wanted to win a freaking award. I won one patch one time and it should have been a trophy. And it pisses me off to this very day. And right now we're in the the, the section of love. So I'm going to keep it to myself. What if the only award we win is a Guinness World Record Award? Uh, we did participate in a Guinness World Record. What was the one? Oh, the, ugh, for La Rose Pose? Yeah, for skin checking for cancer. I think that's that is a badge of honor I wear with pride. Well, I didn't know I was going to win that award when I showed up and I didn't get anything for it. I didn't get even a certificate. So I don't believe I even won in it. I was a pawn in Big Pharma's ploy for skin health. So, but I do believe in skin cancer prevention. So that is good. But anyways, it's not about them. It's about nature documentaries right now yeah and i'm sorry i am also looking for to see if that was a, a fact of truth that i was saying about winnie the pooh and there is a an attenborough that was um included in a winnie the pooh universe um but i i don't know but that is something that i'd like to to spread as news as fact yeah because you every time i bring up david atburn all you ever say back to me is the guy his brothers from winnie the pooh and now it comes out that you're not even sure if that's even true Correct. Misinformation podcast is the subheader for this podcast. Anyways, that was Crush of the Week. What song's been stuck in your head all week? Welcome to Camp Songs. Misinformation Station. Come on, come on. No, we don't. Misinformation We don't like her here. I was having fun. It was giving... um Cooling Ballander? Schoolhouse Rock. Oh. It's like... Conjunction, junction, junction. What's, what's your, your function? function? Or, I'm just a bill. Or figure eight, which was an ice skating video. It, was that a part of Schoolhouse Rock? It was. It was a, It was niche and it was one of my favorites. Oh, okay, fun. Well, anyways, guys, this is Camp Songs. These are the songs that have been stuck in our head all week that we're sharing with you. We added to a playlist linked in the episode description on YouTube and Spotify free for you if you're interested in hearing all of our songs of the week that we've ever had on the show. Lots of hours there. Um, Counselor Jonathan, do you want to start us off with your song of the week? Surely. Um, so my song, my camp song, if you will, is The Call by the Backstreet Boys. Are you familiar with it? Should we sing a little bit? I don't know it by name. What is this one? Listen, baby, I'm sorry. I just want to tell you don't worry. I will be late. Don't stay up. And wait for me. Everybody knows that song. It is a classic. You don't, oh, no, because I sh we were listening to it in L.A. And you were like, what is this? It's a good one. I, I don't know. I had it on hit clips. And I ran that thing into the ground. I downloaded it as a ringtone at one point so I could listen to it when I was on the go. Um, it's a great song. The message behind it is absolute garbage. It's basically like a man cheating on his girlfriend and coming up with an excuse about it. Oh my God. And it was also, I believe it came out in 1999, possibly 2000, possibly 2001. I'm putting my money on 2000. No. Yes. 2000. It was their black and blue album. Um, and I think it was interesting because at the time in the lyrics by Max Martin, who we all know from, you know, Britney Spears and many other things, they talk about the battery on a phone dying and nobody had really done that before. Nobody was really singing about cell phones. Oh, oh yes, that was really cutting edge. I think. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. So now the lyrics kind of resonate, but back then it was like your your battery's running low. Like what the fuck? You're like just get a new plug. Yeah. So anyway, the the song, the messaging itself is like you know it's not that great. But anyway, let me tell you something fun and exciting that I did learn about this. So the song's bass. There's one part in the song where it goes um, dun dun dun. Dun, 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 dun. And if you've heard the song before, you know the exact part that I'm talking about. Well, this is going to change your perception on that part for the rest of your life because it's been altered for me. So Howie, everybody knows Howie. When they were recording, Howie accidentally let out a little, a little trumpet from his ass. Oh, a little too. A little flatulence. Okay. So they laughed it off and they were like, okay, we have to restart that part. But Max Martin had something else up his sleeve. Something else up his wizard sleeve. He took his fart that sounded on key and he added it to be the bass at that part of the song. So when you hear them all say like, bum, 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 and you hear the bass that's in the background, that's a little distorted. That's a fart. That is Howie's fart that you're hearing. Does it sound like a fart? No. He just took like the two, the 
the toot the toot tune the tootsie tune and he kind of just i don't know made it sound like a, a bass line and it works because he farted on key and that's a sign of a true musician do you think you fart on key i can tell you you don't um well i it depends on like what key yeah it depends what i ate that day yeah that's for sure um so i will say that the double cheek sneak squeak peaked <laughs> I did write that down. Um, and the U.S. Billboard charts at 52, but it made its way up the charts to number one in both Romania and the U.K. Interesting how the, the, the difference of like charting there to here. Yeah, and they also recorded it in Sweden, which I guess like I, that's where Max Martin is yeah. from. But that's where like Britney recorded. Like, where's that studio? Yeah, where's Max Martin's heat? Wow, he's got to be like a billionaire. We know where Howie's heat is. Yeah, on that track. Mm -hmm. So that's my song. Wow. What okay. I need to like learn that one because I don't really know a lot of Backstreet Boys. It's honest. really easy to catch on to. Okay. Well, let's play it later. Um, my song is Champagne Problems by Taylor Swift. I was just feeling moody. Yeah. I really was. And I think this is a really sad, sad, well-written, beautifully sung song. I, 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 I make this joke all the time when I make a sad song on here that I love sad music. And so many campers reach out and they're like, no, Zach, I completely agree. I completely get it. I love really sad music. So I'm sure you've already heard this one. Um, it's just a really beautiful song. It feels like winter. It's really depressing. The song is about a man proposing to a woman and she says no. So... I just like love the way that Taylor can really paint a story with her music. Like from start to finish, everything is just so beautifully written. I am going to read a few lyrics because I just like love this whole part of it. Okay, ready? Ready. However green, our group of friends don't think we'll say those words again, which is crazy because when you have a mixed group of friends with a couple and one of you breaks up or whatever, you really do lose that whole group of friends. It's très difficile. It's très difficile. And I'm not going to keep singing it, even though I really want to, but there's just like one part that I like really love when she goes, sometimes you just don't know the answer till someone's on their knees and ask you. She would have made such a lovely bride. What a shame she's fucked in the head, they said. But you'll find the real thing instead. She'll patch up a tapestry that I shred. So was this Jake Gyllenhaal? Um, I'm not really sure who it's about. There's Some a lot of Swifty out there knows. I don't think she was close to being married to Jake Gyllenhaal. I don't think it was about him. Or was this about someone else? I don't know who it's about. And even if it's not specifically about somebody, I think she's really good at tapping into the emotions of like just being a writer. Like I don't think Colleen Hoover's had every experience she's written about either. You know what I mean? I think you're just either born with that storytelling skill or you're not. And I think she's like oozing it. It's giving Dodie Fayette. <gasps> oh my God. It's giving Princess Di. You think so? Yeah. Yeah, I it doesn't sound that far off from it. Maybe I'll re-listen with that in mind. Wait, well, at least so, according to the crown. That's so interesting, babe. What a yeah. great way to think about it. I don't know. It just came into my head. What a shame I'm fucked in the head. I know. Well, I think it's a I think it's a masterpiece. I think it's a Taylor triumph. I really want this relationship to work out with her and Travis Kelsey. I feel like he might be the one for her. And I really try to stay like not involved in this because everyone's just nonstop talking about it. But I do see a little difference in her and the way that she looks at him. I I don't know. I, I could just be fooled by the mainstream media, but I really want this one to work out. Yeah, I think most people do. They do seem like a good couple. Hopefully, this episode does age well. Yeah, but one thing about Taylor Swift, she performs best when she's broken hearted so selfishly i don't mind if it doesn't work out because i know i'll get another banger let me just make a joke obviously we can joke about tomatoes in space but i can't joke about taylor swift's career let tomatoes me in space age better than that okay well that's all we have for today's episode thank you for listening in from your respective cabins and across the world some of you might even be in space <laughs> let us know what a fun episode. I know. This was a fun episode. Jonathan only has one more Christmas sweater in his repertoire. Yeah, you guys. He's we're, been saving it. We're closing out the year pretty soon, so get ready for it. I know. So if you haven't yet, please rate and review us five stars. Leave us a little message. If you already have, well, thanks for doing it. And share the podcast with someone you love this holiday season. What's better than new socks? A new podcast to listen to. Um, no, seriously. We love you guys so much. What a fun last couple weeks it's been. I can't wait for next week. It's another fun episode yes um and with that being said lights, lights out, out campers, campers.